day. I can say that today, right, Neil? Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to welcome you all into my kitchen, and uh, Neil's uh, doing the photography or the camera work tonight. And uh, you can see him when he drinks his Moscow Mule on Friday. And uh, that's it, a Moscow Mule. Huh. We're going to go into detail on where those came from. And Oprah did not invent them because a lot of people think she did. And um, they were bad before she was born, I think. We'll have to figure out when she was born. I don't know. Hey, hey, Alexa. What year was Oprah Winfrey born? Oprah Winfrey was born on January 29th, 1954. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was in the 40s when when this was uh, created. And we'll go into detail on Friday on that. It's a little history week. We're gonna do brownies first. And the first brownie um, is the Palmer House brownie. If you've ever heard the Palmer House, it's in uh, Chicago. It's now a Hilton property. And uh, back in the 1890s, Mrs. Palmer was a suffragette and she was into women's rights. And there's a park across the street, uh, Grant Park, I believe it is. And um, let, me, let me look at my notes because I talk about this all the time. All right, it was in Chicago in 1893. She requested, Bertha Palmer, requested the chef to make something for their box to lunch that was gonna be outside. And this, they did have gloves on. We talked about gloves last week with chocolate cookies. And um, she didn't want a cookie. She didn't want a piece of cake. It would be too messy. Uh, the piece of pie was out of it. So he came up with this little thing called a brownie. This is the exact recipe that they give out and that I've worked with a couple times. And then after this brownie, we're gonna do the 1909 brownie, which was the first brownie that was listed, uh, the recipe in a magazine. And before I keep going, my name is George. Like I said, you're in my kitchen and I teach all over the country, write books and uh, do a lot of morning shows around the country also. So since we can't go anywhere, we're here working in my kitchen. Now, first, I already melted the chocolate. If you've been watching me, which a lot of you have been watching, uh, you can go back and watch all the YouTube. We almost have a hundred of these shows. We were only gonna do this for two weeks. Oven temperature's ready. But what I have here is semi-sweet or bittersweet chocolate and butter. I melted it over a double boiler and it is, smells so good. And that's there. Then we've got our pan that I put a foil line and parchment on the bottom and I sprayed the sides. We have sugar. Brownies are mostly made of sugar. We've got eggs, baking powder. Let me make sure it's powder, yep. We've got a little bit of flour to hold everything together. Then we do, a, we do um, walnuts on top. And after the walnuts and after they bake, it comes out of the oven and we do, uh, this is the European feel to this dessert. We take some gelatin with water and bring it to a boil. Then we add apricot jam on top of that. So it's a very French feel to it. Then we pour that on top of the baked and cooled brownie so you get this glistening. When you stay at the Palmer, if you're in one of the higher end rooms, they give you a brownie on your bed. So I've only gotten that once and I've stayed there three times. So you can tell I'm not always in the higher end district. So the other thing is, is um, this chef left and went to the Waldorf Astoria later on. And then the Waldorf said that they created the brownie, but there's no history. It doesn't show. It does show up here in the Palmer House. So we've got a lot of history this week. Some things we can't figure out and we just kind of take it for granted, whatever we think it is. This brownie is made differently than, uh, w normally what you do with a brownie is you take your sugar and you blend it with the butter and then you pour the uh, chocolate into it and then the flour gets placed in after. Here, I do it like to tell you, double boiler, butter and chocolate. Then we take, with a paddle attachment, we're gonna take the sugar, the flour, and the baking powder. And, the baking powder, and we're gonna turn that on. Let's stir a little bit. On low. On, well, yeah. Uh, remember this kid. I worked at Marriott Hotels for three years before I worked at Disney. And this one kid, he, he was probably only about five feet tall. And the, the sacks of flour back then were 100 pounds. They put them to 50 pounds now. 
and he dumped the whole hundred pounds in, and he went with it. He came out, and, and he, was, uh, he was an African-American guy, and he took his glasses off, and he was completely white dusted except his rope, and he looked so scary. And he's like, ah! <laughs> the, the whole flower came up at him. What was his name? I just remember we'd send him downstairs to go get t stuff, and he'd always call us about 10 minutes later not remembering what we told him to go get. All right, now all that's in there. Now what we're gonna do is take all of our chocolate and put it in. Wait, let me make sure. I haven't made these for a while, so I'm gonna, okay, yeah, then we'll add the eggs one time. So, we want this on low when I do the chocolate. And then I will, and you wanna make sure that all that chocolate is melted completely. So I'm gonna scrape the sides. I'm doing this sideways. And then, make sure I get all of it. Then we're going to have the eggs. But before I do the eggs, I'm going to scrape the bottom and the sides down, just to make sure I don't have any dry uh, chunks of mixture, which I do. So. We'll turn this on for about four minutes, and we'll add the eggs in. Make sure I get all the sides. And turn it up a little bit more. And there's just a few minutes, and then I'll add this egg in one at a time. Now, if you look at it, it looks grainy. Well, it's because the sugar. The sugar will all melt in and be beautiful when it's uh, browning. So, with one egg, Oop, we hope. Whenever I'm putting eggs into anything, the very last egg, prior to the last egg, I scrape the sides down. So since I have four eggs in this, after I do the third one, I will scrape the edges down. I was called out that I'm not showing enough of the interior of things, so I'm trying very hard this week oh, to show right. more mixes in process. There were a couple of people that didn't say something. Even though I don't get paid for this job, you get I food. take it very seriously. You get food. <laughs> okay, so now I've got one last. And see how it looks like coagulated? That's normal. Don't worry. And then... We'll add our last one in. And as soon as that's all blended up, we'll pour this into our pan. Now it makes 24 brownies, so what I do is I've got a pan and this in to here. It's a little on the messy side. Brownies are always messy. Just like that. Then I'll pour this in and then I've got the walnuts. I've got, um, make sure this all blended so I can check the bottom, make sure I don't have anything. There you go. Oh, I love batters. So it's still a little grainy at this point, right? Yeah. We got a little greeniness. Then we're going to smooth it out to the edges. Just like that. This does bake at a low oven. It's only 300. It's not like 350. And it goes for almost 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Then you're going to put your, I'm going to do uh, four rows of six. So I'll do one, two, three, four. Got one here. So I'll have 24 slices in my and we'll do all these now 
I need four in between here, right? Yes. So you're eyeballing it. One. Two. Too much space. Too much space, you think? Mm -hmm. Three. Boop. We can always move them. Four. How's that? Too much Pretty space. Good. Too much space there. Yeah. I, I should get a ruler out. There you go. There. There we go. Perfect. See? This is why I'm not a doctor. I would uh, not be able to say, whoops, pastry chefs, we can move things around, we can add whipped cream to things, and then it's perfect. Those walnuts do, like little, do look like little brains. So you're like a brain surgeon. Brains? You think they look like brains? Kind of. I hope I have enough. Whoops, once. There we go. Perfect. Alrighty, so this is this is gonna bake in the oven. And we'll be back when it's done. And remember, we're gonna put gelatin with hot water, and then we're going to put our jam together, and that will be poured on top. So we'll be back. Our Palmer brownies came out anyway. They're still a little warm, but they're fine. And Neil noticed, he said they, they sink like that. They puff up a little and then they do sink. So don't worry. Now we've got uh, our topping. This is that European feel. Uh, we've got water that we're going to bring to a boil. We've got about a teaspoon of plain gelatin. So just not gelatin. And then we have our preserves. You could use peach if you want, but apricot is what they use a lot in France. And uh, on top of different tarts and things like that, it's always that. So what we're going to do is, as soon as this comes to a boil, which it's almost there, we're going to put our granulation in, stir it, and then we're going to add our into it. See how a couple of the brains uh, the, on the edges, the edges you can eat yourself. So, but Neil's thinking, hmm. So see how hot that is? Stir that in. Just like that. Now we're gonna take our apricot. Gonna stir that in. Lower. So it's all blended up. Soup. It looks like apricot soup, doesn't it? Yep. This is so European, this part. While well, it's stirring, I just wanna make sure I'm doing exactly how. Yep, as soon as this is blended, we put this on top of those brownies and then we wait about 30 minutes before cutting. So what we'll do is we'll put this on top and so you don't have to wait, we will put this on top. So here's our sauce. We're gonna pour this on top. You know what, I'm gonna get a little ladle and a brush because this is interesting. I mean, it's just, yeah, just pour this on top. I don't want to see this. And then we will, we should wait about a half hour before cutting. So. We will uh, wait until, and it does create kind of a, it soaks it in. I'm surprised they didn't put liqueur in this, but then women weren't supposed to be drinking out in the park when they made these. So <laughs> We're back from doing the first brownie, that uh, brownie from uh, Palmer House. And if you ever get to Chicago, go into the Palmer House Hilton. It, they redid it about six, eight years ago. And it is opulent and it's beautiful. And it's like an old, I thought I had chocolate with me, an old hotel should be. Uh, 
They even have, uh, I'm trying to think of that room. What's that room? The Starlight Room, something like that? Where all the performers, and they have a whole list on everybody that's ever gone. And they do tours of the place. We're talking when the world gets back to normal. So, anyway, what we're going to... And, and, when you look on people's Instagram and you look on people's uh, Facebook, people are commenting about, well, you don't have a mask on in that picture. Well, what's funny is some of the pictures are five, 10 years old that people are posting. They're just posting some things. So don't jump to conclusions. Um, we went to the grocery store. How was the grocery store this last weekend? It was fine. Sunday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most everybody was wearing a mask, except I always get mad. Oh, people oh, okay. that don't cover their nose. Yeah, there were a few that were. You might as well not wear one. Their noses. All right, so we're getting from mass to brownie history. So don't get me started. <laughs> what happened was is that brownie was made by the chef over at the hotel, and then it took about ten years before brownie was listed in any publication of any sort. And it was listed in the 1909 Boston Cooking School Cookbook, the Fanny Farmer Cookbook that has been updated all these years. And I have, when you go online to download the recipes, there'll be the original recipe exactly how it's written. And then I redid it. It was, uh, it, it tells you to line a seven inch square pan with paraffin paper. Well, first of all, we don't do seven inch square pans and uh, the uh, and you bake it in a slow oven it doesn't tell you how much or anything so it's uh, I I'm trying to read anything, anything anything strange so what I did is I rewrote it wrote it for today and I called the 1909 Boston Brownie and now I see why uh, a slow oven is about 350 and we're using a nine by 13 or nine by 12 inch pan. And I doubled the recipe pretty much because while you're making brownies, you might as well make it enough for everybody. We've got sugar in here and we've got uh, butter and eggs. And the butter's melted on this one. And the eggs go in, we'll blend that up. As soon as that's blended, we will add the chocolate into it. Now, Neil wants to show you up close, and sometimes you can't hear anything but the mixture, so you might have to turn down your volume a little bit. There goes all the chocolate. Neil loves to lick the bowl, so I'm going to let him lick this one without any problem. Look how rich that looks. Doesn't that look good? Looks good. There's only four ounces of chocolate in here, so you don't have a whole lot. I'll put that off to the side. Then we have the vanilla, which is one and a half teaspoons. And the vanilla in the chocolate enhances the flavor. So we'll add... Oh, and these both hands. There's one and a half, and that's it for that part. And then I'm going to take and fold in my flour. And I'm going to clean this up a little with my fingers. And there's that. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't see Neil. Okay, Neil loves licking the bowl, and so I'll put the bowl off to the side. And he really worries that I'm gonna put water in it. Well, I told him he could lick it, but he didn't ask. It's unsweetened chocolate. There is no sugar in this, and the look on his face. <laughs> Not funny. Uh oh, he's gonna get back at me now. Okay, now we put our flour in. And you can put any kind of nuts, like pecans. You can do uh, walnuts if you want. You just gotta blend this until it's all blended up. Now this batter is a little bit thicker 
than that uh, first one we did. Also, if you want, you can take, put some chocolate chunks into it. And this batter is very thick. So, let me put my vanilla cap back on. And you think, wow, it's pretty thick. But you're going to take an offset spatula and smooth it. Down into the corners. I've got paper down here because I don't want it to. I'm holding it. Okay. Trying to get all on the edges. And the reason why I do the foil, and I've explained this before, but if you've heard it, you'll understand. I do the foil first, so I can lift the whole thing up out of the pan when it's done. Just like that. And this a little thick right here. And there we go. So we are going to put this in the oven, and we'll be back when this comes out, and then we'll have our brownies. See you in a little our bit. Brownies are out of the oven. And this is the 1909 brownie, and it does have icing on it. I didn't make the icing in front of you because I've made so many fudge icings. So what I'll do is have the recipe. It's just a buttercream, a fudge buttercream icing that's really good. And then this is the uh, Palmer House and with the orange marmalade on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present them. And whoo, you have to count how many people you're going to try to serve. So... If you're serving one, you got enough. If you cut it in half, you've got enough for two people. And every time you do a cut, you do want to wash your blade because you'll get what I call, and I keep the hot water going, what I call is um, kind of a residue on your blade and then it gets all over. Same thing when you cut cheesecakes or cakes. So what I always do when I cut is I go in half, then half of that, and then I figure out how many I need per quarter. So if it's 16, I'll do these into four. If I need uh, 24, I do six. So if I did six in these, which six will look nice, because that's 24 already. So then I take a quarter and then Neil's gonna do a close up real quick of how I did this. So half, then quarter, figure out how many I need. So I do, I'm gonna do six into the quarter. So that means three per piece. So here I'll take this piece and I will cut it into three or this piece. I'm gonna put that off to the side. And then you can eyeball this to get six squares or pieces. You know what I mean? You're understanding, aren't you, Neil? I am. Okay. The reason why I asked Neil... I didn't know you wanted uh, cameraman participation. Oh. <laughs> the reason why I asked Neil is because he doesn't cook. Well, he cooks a lot more than he used to. And if he understands it, I think everybody else will. So... It's just if I'm explaining it well enough. And the frosting on here is fudgy to where it will kind of melt. So you want to only do one layer of brownie. Let me do another one here. And these are... The so if you, if you want them all pretty square, you do trim off the edges? No, I'm good. Okay, I'll do the next... I'll do this next one square. Okay, see, so these are bar brownie bars. Beautiful. Now, here's, remember, this is a fourth also. Mm -hmm. So you just do here, and you do it in 16. So there are squares. So, no, four, so this, I believe. I just meant if you wanted 
See how that piece has a rounded, you've got oh. squares there. Well, so if you cut it, yeah, if you cut the edge, you if could. you wanted to do it. Yeah, if you want to make them completely square and perfect, but there is your square ones like that. So, okay. and then we will come back and we will do our other brownie, our uh, brownie from the 1890s. Now this one, I already put the pecans, or I mean the nuts, and I did that glaze. So each one already has it. And this one is more of a cake and it's very moist because we've done that uh, mixture that it calls for. So the blade itself is gonna be stickier. So I'm gonna wa make sure I really wash it for, and so just like that. And we use a thin blade. You don't use a serrated knife because you need to get in there. A serrated knife is more for breads and things like that. So you're cutting this one different. You're not doing it into quarters. Right, because I already have the pieces. Oh. Because remember I the other day, or the, I mean. We did the, the walnuts and yeah. the pecans. So this was four, like that. Whoop. And see how this is cakier. But this is the original brownie recipe that um, they made at the Palmer house. And sometimes the edges are a little bit thicker. They do kind of fall. So if you wanna do a big presentation, just stick with the flat ones and those ones like that. You'll just uh, serve them later. If you're trying to do a nice picture or something. So there's your next four and here's your next four. And these don't have any icing in it, but they do have that marmalade that we did with the uh, apricots. Uh, the what? Apricots. The apricots and we firmed it up a little bit with some water and gelatin. So, so there we go. Do those. And if some, sometimes the nuts, it wasn't perfect. Do that. But these are really fudgy. These are what I think I told you, they give you a couple of them on your uh, turn down service. And these are from the Palmer House in Chicago. And again, I think I told you before, make sure if you're ever in Chicago in the loop, go and have a drink or see the inside. It is a beautiful, beautiful hotel that uh, is very opulent and it's very old fashioned. They can't um, build them like that anymore. Nope. It was too costly. It's beautiful. I'm going to pull this off because I don't like that edge and I'm going to take Try the edge it. down. Then you can taste those. Nobody will know. There we go. That'll look better. So anyway, and there is our second one. So Neil just tried the edge. What do you think? It's How delicious. You, it's, okay. Yeah, it really it, is good. It's yeah. Neil approved. In fact, our neighbor, did you notice Jen? She said, brownies with question mark. Because I do send some stuff. She loves brownies. Does she? Well, she liked the chocolate donuts from two weeks ago. She liked, <laughs> she, she liked chocolate, I think. So anyway, there's our history on uh, brownies. I hope you enjoyed today. And tomorrow we'll be going to Lowry's California Center in Los Angeles and talk about the Lowry's company and their spices. Take care and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one. Bye now.